Buen Camino, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of what I'm calling Knowing the Way, which is my idea to have a book vlog and a Camino vlog in one and talk about the research that I've done for the Camino that's not that research that I've kind of talked about that's what backpack do you bring and how many kilometers can you go and how do you get to San Juan and how long should you stay in Lyon and all these other things, but is more research on things related to the Camino and ideas about the Camino, whether it be Camino memoirs of people that have done it, historical accounts of the Camino, historical accounts of pilgrimage in other ways, whether it be medieval pilgrimage or pilgrimage maybe even other religions I might touch on, uh, and also history that relates to the Camino but isn't specifically about it. Uh, the history of Islamic Spain, of medieval Spain, uh, of the reconquest, of how Spain came to be and the different historical influences that have affected the Camino. And that's everything from, you know, the Romans and the Visigoths and maybe even the history of ancient Judea to Franco or the European Union. Um, the first book that I want to talk about, I've decided, is a pilgrim's memoir that I read that has been my favorite pilgrim's memoir. And I've read at least a dozen now in the last few years. And I think that one of the reasons that this has been my favorite is it was a reaction to the one that I read directly before it, which was very secular and very cynical and very not in the pilgrim spirit. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna talk about that book, so maybe I won't name names, but I found it uh, in a used collection of books that was very heavy on pilgrim books and I didn't like it uh, and I found this book in the same collection and it turned out to be one of my favorites and I've read on the Camino forums that it's a lot of other people's favorites so the book is To the Field of Stars by Kevin A. Codd. Uh, subtitle here is A Pilgrim's Journey to Camino de Santiago or Santiago de Compostela uh, and Kevin A. Codd is a Roman Catholic priest and I connect to this guy about as much as I think I'll ever connect to a Roman Catholic priest. Um, if you don't know me, I'm not Catholic. I've never been Catholic. Uh, I've been a Protestant my entire life. Um, I'm from a Protestant family, but I wouldn't say I was so much raised Protestant as I was raised kind of in a Protestant culture. And actually, when I was young, I asked my parents to take me to church, like starting at a young age, like seven or eight, and I went like without my family. Like they would just drop me off at church and kind of with people in the community. And they're like, well, he wants to go to church and we really don't want to, but we're not gonna tell him no. Of all the things your kid can ask to do, like, can I please go to church is, you know, <laughs> a pretty tame request. But since, well, always I've had an interest in Catholicism, uh, an intellectual interest and a historical interest. Um, and studying the history of Europe, you, you can't help but be interested in the Catholic Church um, and in the way this has developed. And, and at the time that the Camino began, in the West, uh, there just was the church. There was no Catholic Church, it just was the church. There just was the church. Um, so the history of the Catholic Church is also the history just of Western Christianity in general. Um, and. Kevin's book, uh, Father Cod, uh, but he just goes by Kevin, so I think I'll just call him Kevin, is really what I could say like the gold standard of the Christian spirit uh, as told by a Catholic priest. I really feel that his um, spirituality and the way that he interacts with people is like the best example I can see of a Christian spirit, especially because it's not always. And he recognizes that when he gets angry at someone, when he gets impatient with someone along the way, whether it's a hospitalero or whether it's a fellow pellegrino, he, <laughs> he always like checks himself. He always has this self-awareness in his memoir and in his travels that says, oh, you know, I wasn't really a great Christian today. I wasn't, I was, uh, I wanted this thing and I didn't get it and so I was upset. I took it out on other people. I wasn't friendly. I wasn't a good companion. And his, his self-criticisms are great because they're very insightful and they make you connect to him in such a way that you, you kind of want to pat him on the back and be like, listen, Kevin, you like said, you were like 
wanted one thing and you didn't get that one thing and then you were having a bad day and then you weren't friendly to someone else you don't have to go to confession over that and say i've committed the sin of xyz uh which of course he always does he always feels like he then he needs to run to confession but like well jesus i'm i'm not being very good christian today right because i've i've been wrathful <laughs> because I was unfriendly to someone on the path for like 30 seconds. So now that's like, I've, I've done this thing. I've got too much pride. Um, the humility is great. Uh, I just, you know, one of my main issues with Catholicism is the entire idea of, of the sacrament of reconciliation, which is what they call, um, commu uh, not communion, uh, confession, you know, and, uh, I just can't, I just can't connect to that at all. I just can't, uh, he tries to explain it in the best he can, Kevin, uh, Father Cod in the book. And, um, I think his explanation of it is probably like the most beautiful, uh, and eloquently put <laughs> explanation of the rights of, uh, confession, uh, reconciliation. But even that I still, I'm still just like, oh, I can see, I can see where the, where you can see that in your own philosophy but it's it's one thing that to me puts a hard break with the catholic church is the idea of of kind of to me empowering someone else by confessing your sins which are you know between you and god in some way uh, no no i mean directly directly right because you can't sin against man you can only sin against god maybe we sin against god in the form of sinning against man um but at any rate professor um father cod's sins are, are pretty minor in my book um and his blessings are great he's a great writer that's the first thing a lot of it is that he imbues his work with humor both that self kind of deprecating humor where he's able to criticize himself and laugh at himself but also he has great observations about people and i think the his observations about people are actually what makes the book because there's some really strange parts of the book that are quirks of his own personality. Uh, some of them are, he just starts having conversations with like animals. Like at one conversation, he starts talking to like a snail and uh, other animals along the way, like donkeys or, I can't even remember all the animals that he has conversations with, but I mean, he's got dialogue in the book where you can sit there and read his dialogue to animals that he is passing as he walks along the way and then he has he talks to them and they talk back and at some points you're like is this a metaphor is this what you were thinking in your head do you believe that this donkey talked to you what is happening here were you getting a voice from god um i always took them as like he's having this conversation about what it would be like and it also reminded me of another book um pilgrim snail that i'm probably going to review that's also from a very, very different person, from a different culture, from a different country, uh, that also did the Camino, and he had a relationship to snails. But that was another one of my favorite memoirs that I'll talk about. I'm really interested uh, in the follow-up book to this that I also want to talk about, but I'm only going to talk about the, this first book in which uh, he travels from uh, saint jean pierre de port through Spain and, and com completes the Camino at Santiago. One of the disappointing parts of the book is that when he was done, he was like, yeah, I have no interest in Finisterre. What is that? No, I'm here and this is done. I'm at the cathedral and let's fly home. Um, I was kind of like, well, like, you're very dismissive of this of this extra part of the Camino, the Finisterre, which I, I hope that I can do. Um, and I definitely have interest in. I was surprised that he had no interest, especially because he seemed to relate to so many geographic things on the trail and, and uh, animals on the trail and people on the trail that he he really felt like when he got to the cathedral, like, that was it. And there was nothing about the Finisterra that he was interested in. Um, but yeah, going back to his connection to people, he's a great sketcher of, of personalities. He can put in a few lines or in, or in a few small uh, antidotes, um, just capturing somebody's spirit uh, and essence. And I was especially interested when he meets someone or travels with someone for multiple days or meets them multiple times, the way that his impressions of them change over time. And he did keep a journal and I, I believe he kept a blog and you can still get his blog at, 
hmm, kcod.blogspot.com if it's still up. You could tell that he had a diary and you can tell that he had notes because he remembers these incidents. And it's hard when you're writing a journal and you're remembering things, even from a few days ago, your reaction isn't the same. If you try, as I've done many times over the years, keeping a journal, and then let's say even on Friday, I'm writing about what happened in the week. My perception of things have already changed. And if you do write daily and then you go back and read, because I, I reread my journals throughout the years, your perspective on things change. You'll even read what you wrote and you said, that's not what I think of that now, but it was what you think of it that day. And I, and I mean, this happens on every level. On every level of things, if you don't put down in writing what you think and feel then or shortly thereafter, you will find even after days, it has changed. If you go back and read your own writing. And so if you have an experience with someone where you've known them for a long time, it's very hard to remember how you thought or felt about them. They say, oh, first impressions last forever. They don't, they do not. Your, your experience with people changes. And I thought that Kevin did a great job of what was his initial reaction to someone and then how did he experience the time that he spent with that person as it went on after hours, after days, seeing them again, being separate, um, having time to reflect. I, he was able to capture the nuance of his experience in the now. I think that that particularly makes him a very good memoirist and I really enjoyed the way that his memoir uh, captured that sense of, of his impression in the moment and what he was living in the moment. And perhaps the fact that he was on pilgrimage helped that a lot. And I would say that if he was writing a memoir that was just about some other period of his life that maybe didn't have those experiences of meeting people and losing people and regaining people that the um, pilgrimage naturally brings out in people that naturally occurs in that setting, maybe his writing wouldn't be as interesting. Maybe. He might still actually be a, a, just a really good writer that could capture these skets of people even in a different setting. But I think that particularly the way that he captures people through these small vignettes and experiences uh, combined with his own inner monologue and his, his kind of transparency in his thought process makes a great combination with the Camino and with the voyage that he was on. If you wanted to read a book about the Camino and you wanted to read from a modern pilgrim, uh, I couldn't recommend anybody as highly as I could recommend Kevin's book. Uh, he did write a second book and I'm gonna talk about that in a separate video. Um, brief version, I don't recommend it as much as this book. It's not as good as this book. I wouldn't read them out of order either. I would read this book first because this is gonna be the best. Um, the best writing and the best experience, the best read and it's also kind of the most affirming um, because of the spirituality and the beliefs and just the fun, uh, the spirit that he brings to it. Um, the other book, like I said, I'll talk about it in a different video, but I would not read the other book first if you're going to read both books. I would read To the Field of Stars. The second book is called Beyond Even the Stars, uh, Compostela Pilgrim in France. Um, it was just recently published, like last year, I think. And, um... I guess the two books could be kind of easily confused because they're both one of them's to the field of stars and the other one's beyond even the stars. So don't go beyond the stars until you get to the stars. Is that a good way to remember it? Get to the field of stars, this one, uh, and read this. If you're looking for a, a Camino memoir that's spiritual, that is somewhat religious, that is well written, that is funny, that's poignant. Uh, that's very smartly written by someone who can write, that's a very good writer, that was able to capture the experience, to capture the people, and to capture their own thoughts and uh, essence. Uh, Kevin Codd's book is the best that I've read out of more than a dozen Pilgrim's memoirs over the last couple years. Um, and I've seen many people on the communal forums express the same idea, that his was one of their favorites. Um, there's another one called The Great Westward Walk, that I think was put right up there with his, which I have not read, which is probably um, getting to the top of my list of like the next Pilgrim memoir that I'm gonna read. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to read it before I leave because I've only got, what, 122 days now before I leave. I have quite a bit of reading going on, um, but I will leave you once again with this book. This is my number one recommendation for a Pilgrim memoir. If you've 
walk to the Camino, or if you're yet to walk the Camino, or if you'll never walk the Camino but want to read about it, Kevin A. Codd, To the Field of Stars.